Hey guys, welcome to Mike's RV Couch where we learn and talk all things RVing, the sharing economy, and we share some stories. I'm Mike McNaughton, I'm uh, joined here with uh, Tyler Maloney from BGM RV Center. Uh, welcome Tyler. Thanks a lot Mike and RV Easy team for having me. That's great, so today we, uh, we really wanted to bring Tyler in just to talk about um, some maintenance tips over the winter time, how to prepare for the spring season, and how to really ensure that, that your investment is taken care of and it's gonna last a long time so that you can provide the best experience for your renters and also for personal use. Because we know that the more, more time and energy you put into maintaining your RV, the better experience you're gonna have and the less issues down the road. That's right. So, so maybe Tyler, just uh, give us a bit of an introduction where, you know, where you're from, what you guys do, and uh, yeah, just let us know more about you. So as Mike said, I'm Tyler. I'm from BGM RV Center. I'm the service manager there. We've been in business for the past uh, almost 20 years now, but primarily in RVs, we've been focusing on RVs for the past 10 years, um, growing constantly. We're located in Chesterville, Ontario. For those of you that have no idea where Chesterville is, um, just south uh, southeast of Ottawa a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so you gotta tell me, uh, Tyler, what, what would be your favorite RV style? Myself, I'm, I'm kind of biased. I, I love my Class A motorhome. Uh, but yourself, when you get your time to head out, what, what's your favorite? So if it was up to me, uh, I love driving my truck, so it would be a travel trailer. Um, my family is growing, so it would. Uh, my, my dream would be a fifth wheel. Yeah, yeah I, I have to say, I, I have a fifth wheel myself at, uh, you know, at a seasonal campground, and I don't think there's a better style for a family as far as uh, you know, room height, height in the inside. I love the layout of the, of the bedroom. There's just so much extra space. It can be very intimidating for some people towing a great big fifth wheel, but honestly, it does tow much easier, much nicer than a travel trailer. Yeah, and, and you know what we, we actually find is that a lot of people want that experience. They don't have the truck. Uh, so we have a lot of owners that would offer to deliver that type of trailer directly to a campsite, set it up, and then at least people who don't have the truck, they'd have the ability to use that type of trailer and enjoy the camping experience. Yeah, that's very handy. Um, so looking at, you know, we're in the middle of winter right now, it's minus 30 outside, uh, but you know what? We're a couple months away, everyone's thinking about RVing, they're planning their summer vacations. Um, you know, so whether you're an owner or a renter, that, you know, RVing's starting to, to pop into your head about your summer. Um, so what I'd really kind of like to jump into is what, what should we have done, I guess, in the fall to prepare over the winter time with the RV? And then what kind of things can we do over the winter time or should we do to ensure things are ready in the spring? And then what do we do in the spring to make sure that the RV is set and ready for you know, personal use or rental use or whatever you're using your RV for? Because we know they're probably the second most expensive asset that people buy. And we wanna make sure that that lasts for a long period of time so that the family can enjoy it year after year. Um, so kind of thinking like, in the fall, what should we be doing so that we know that the RV is safe, it's ready over the winter time? Yep, so the first and most important thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure it's properly winterized. Make sure you get all the water out of that system, drain all your tanks, your gray tank, black tank, and fresh water tank, and of course your hot water tank. Um, next thing uh, would be uh, rodent uh, preventative maintenance. You'd wanna put down some sort of uh, rodent deterrent um, a lot of people are quite fond of bounce sheets. I find the more bounce sheets you use, uh, the, the better luck you're gonna have with keeping those, uh, those rodents out of there. Um, the next thing would be uh, covers are extremely important. Um, not everybody uses them. Uh, UV rays are quite uh, harsh on an exterior of an RV, so uh, the cover would certainly help that and it would help against any possible uh, water infiltration throughout the winter. Um, that, that, that's a really great tip because I, I don't think that's always intuitive of owners is the, the damage that just the sun can cause to the right. exterior of an RV and uh, you know whether that's caulking, right? Having caulking yep. shrink and, and, and affected by the UV rays or your tires or anything like that. Again, we want these things to last for years and years and years. And just by that little bit of preventative maintenance, we're, we were able to do that. That's right. Um, and what, what, what's, uh, what's your opinion on mothballs or using the, the newer mothballs inside? Mothballs, I would, uh, I, I definitely don't recommend, recommend using them inside the RV. Definitely, you could put them outside. They're, they're definitely less common, I'd say, nowadays than what they used to be. 
Um, but the reason I wouldn't put them inside is because what if that rodent thinks that that's food inside there? And they don't, they don't realize that they don't like that until they're actually inside, but then they're realizing, hey, you know, this would be a perfect home for the winter. I think yeah. I might just stay. <laughs> yeah, no, that, 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 that's 100% right. That makes a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, one thing I've noticed, I, you know, I, I store my, my motorhome outside, right, at a, at a storage lot. Um, and, you know, I, when I go in and I visit in the wintertime, it's, it's almost like a musical symphony. You can hear these beepings all over the place of, of uh, you know, the, the carbon monoxide detectors or these low battery beepings. Uh, so something myself I, I make sure I do is battery maintenance. What do I do with my house batteries on the RV? What should I be doing before the winter hits? Yeah, so unless you're extremely confident of the, um, the longevity and the strength of those batteries, um, I would suggest removing them, bring them in someplace warm. Batteries don't like the freezing cold. Um, another thing would be if, if you choose to leave the batteries in there, make sure that they're fully charged. Um, if you have a battery shut off, shut that, shut it off. If you don't have a battery shut off, I would recommend installing one. Um, your LP detector, your CO detector, they're always going to draw down on that battery if that shut off's not, uh, not engaged. Um, and, and, and what we're trying to avoid is uh, a discharge, a charged battery will not freeze. We exactly. Know it. it will yep. not freeze. But just that small draw of power that happens over the winter time and that battery discharges, now you're at risk of freezing that battery. That's right. And uh, we know they're not cheap. Right? As, so now as I, soon as that battery freezes, there's no, there's no, no coming back from that. So. Yeah, so like, save yourself the trouble, remove mm -hmm. the battery from the RV, it's, it's somewhere warm. So now, now we're looking, we're entering into winter, we've, we've properly uh, winterized our water lines, our, our fresh water tanks, our hot water tanks, batteries are gone. We're okay for the winter time, but I, I think there's still some things we should probably be visiting the RV at some point in the winter time, just, just to check up on it. What, what, what are we looking for? So especially this time of year and this, this winter specifically, we've got quite the dumping of snow lately and I have a funny feeling we're gonna get more. And as we all know, that weight of snow on the roof isn't exactly healthy for the RV, especially when we get closer to the spring when it starts to thaw and then freeze and then thaw and then we get more snow, that's quite a bit of weight up there. Yeah. So I, I don't recommend going up on the roof of the RV. It's, it's, it's not safe uh, during the winter, but I do recommend getting a nice tall ladder and maybe trying to remove some of that snow to get some of that weight off that roof. Um, I recommend maybe a, a a foam style brush. Uh, I don't recommend anything too aggressive because yeah. there is a lot of plastic up there and we all know what happens uh, with plastic when it's when it's freezing cold. And, and, and that makes a lot of sense and, and you know we look at this winter and especially in the Ottawa area and really across the country we've experienced a large amount of snowfall and that is a lot of weight when you think about that and especially it starts to thaw and uh, probably the number one concern of RV owners is the water damage. Right, uh, is that's what we're trying to avoid. By so taking these small preventative measures in the winter time, just checking up, checking in on the RV, really getting to know your specific unit, is just setting yourself up for years and years and years of, of future use. That's right. So now, now we're getting through the winter time. It's you know the spring's around the corner. Uh, we know guys like yourself are really busy in the spring. Um, you know whether you're doing this yourself or you're getting a, a technician to do it for you there are some pretty important things that you should be doing every spring to ensure that everything is taken care of. Um, you know, so maybe we can walk through like, what, what should me as an RV owner, whether it's a trailer or motorhome, what should I be doing in the springtime to ensure that I'm confident that this unit is ready for, for, for my summer use? Yeah, so the springtime is a very exciting time of year for RV owners and even renters themselves. But as an RV owner, there are quite a few measures that you could take to, to make it that much easier going throughout the season without any trouble. Um, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, unwinterize your RV. Um, a lot of people don't know this tip, but something I'm pretty firm on is whenever you're unwinterizing an RV, I recommend using your fresh water tank and water pump as opposed to the city water. Uh, and, and here's why. So let's say um, you winterize the RV yourself and you didn't quite get all that water out of there and now it's spring and it's time to unwinterize it. So you grab your garden hose, you hook it up to your city water inlet, you go over to the faucet, you turn the faucet on, 
you walk back to the RV, open the door to find water all over the floor. So alternatively, if you were to use the fresh water tank and the pump, you would fill your fresh water tank with the hose, go inside, put that switch on for the water pump, and now you have two jobs. You listen, so you listen for the sound of that water pump's making. Um, you want it to pressurize the system and then shut off. If that water pump doesn't shut off, there's one or two, one of two issues. Um, it's either not pulling water from that tank or it's, it's not pressurizing the system, which means water is escaping somewhere. Another thing you can be doing is uh, looking for any signs of, of water leaks. And it's as simple as, uh, as soon as you see that water leak, you, you simply shut that pump off, uh, everything's safe, there's not gonna be any more water coming out. And that, that's, that's a really good tip, and uh, you know, because looking at that, you're, you're kind of testing a number of things. Uh, by doing that, you're, you're gonna ensure that your fresh water tank's holding water, exactly. like it should be. Uh, and you're also being, being able to test that your pump's working properly, all within the confines of the RV. So I think that's a, a really important tip. Uh, so rather than hooking up to that city water and you're running in and out and getting that water flowing, let's test the actual RV components to make sure everything's working properly and that you're able to identify problems quick, quick and, and swiftly. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's great. Um, I'm trying to think of like, so now, now we're looking, let's, let's look at a motorhome. Is there, what's specifically on a motorhome? You know, they're kind of similar and different, similar RV components to a trailer but they kind of have their own unique needs. Uh, you know, often they're equipped with a generator, an onboard generator, uh, they have engines, they have, you know, the more tires that end up moving. Uh, what should I be looking at in the springtime? Uh, you know, I've, I've unwinterized my RV, the water's out of the water lines, I've, you know, my, my hot water tank's working, everything's working now, I've, I've confirmed that. What other preventative measures should I be looking at in the springtime for my motorhome, let's say, uh, to make sure that it's ready for use? Yeah, so on a motorhome specifically, um, we, don't, we don't touch any of the powertrain, um, so we do sublet that work out. But it's very important to make sure that your, your drivetrain uh, and, and, and everything is running smoothly before um, going out on your first, uh, your first camping uh, trip. Um, another thing, if, if your motorhome is equipped with a gener generator, which most are, you're going to want to follow the manufacturer's service recommendations as far as oil changes go. Um, check clean, maybe replace your air filter if needed. Um, if it has a fuel filter, you want to replace that at that time as well. And then, so, so now we have our, our generators working, uh, you know, make sure you follow your, your service schedule. So, you know, oil changes, air filter. Generators are awesome to have. They're fantastic when you're dry camping, but if they don't work, they're, they're, they're useless. Right? Absolutely. So just make, doing that general maintenance, making sure it's running properly, that it's powering your components is just super important. Um, you know, as well as we want to test our, our, our fridges, making sure that it's working both on electrical and on, and on propane, uh, making sure everything's up to date. Um, and then we look at, you know, a lot of moving parts in a motorhome, a lot of moving parts in a trailer, uh, you know, you're seeing like these days you can get motorhomes with four slides and things moving all over the place. The last thing you want is to be out on the road and you have a, a slide that won't come in or won't go out or it's just not working properly. Is there anything I should be doing to ensure that I've done the proper maintenance to ensure the longevity of that, of that slide? Yes, absolutely. Um, you want to properly lubricate the slide out mechanism so it's, uh, it remains rust free and just smooth operating going in and out. Um, another thing is uh, a lot of people don't focus on, but your slide out seals, they can cause quite a bit of headache if left, left uh, unmaintained. Um, so there is a slide out seal conditioner you should be applying to those seals at least once a year. Yeah, and th that makes a lot of sense because you know, we, we want these things to last a long time, a lot of moving parts, uh, but simple maintenance steps are going to help you know, make sure that it lasts a long time. Um, and you don't, you mentioned something I think is really important and we talked about you know UV rays in the winter time and causing damages um, you know number one, a big complaint of owners of what damages occur is is water leaks right um, so when we talk about caulking some caulkings that sometimes it's gonna crack they're gonna shrink um, what what should I be doing in the spring like, to get to know my RV and, and understand 
you know, do I need new caulking? How often should I replace it? What, what are the maintenance kind of tips as far as ensuring the caulking is good? Yeah, so the most important thing you can do in the spring, um, a lot of people don't do this or have never done this, is go up on the roof of that RV and, and check its condition. Um, yeah. While you're up there, you can, you can determine whether did a tree branch fall on my roof over the winter and cause damage. Um, while you're up there, you can, you can check the caulking or lap seal, or self-leveling lap seal on that roof to make sure it's in good condition. Um, check your roof vents, make sure they're not broken. And then once you climb down off that ladder, you can just have a walk around your RV and check the condition of the caulking on the sides of the RV to make sure it's not cracked there's no gaps. Um, it, is, it is quite tricky to identify those sources of, of any potential water leaks. So we're fortunate enough that we have a piece of equipment that we can use to identify a smallest pinhole size of a, of a leak. Um, it's a, it's a seal tech uh, pressurized system that we install inside the RV and it hooks up to one of your roof vents. Yeah. It's got a fan in it, so once you turn that on, it applies just a bit of positive pressure inside the RV. And then we go on the outside with a soap and water solution, and we spray down all your joints, seals, caulking. And anywhere there is a leak, it'll actually bubble, much like checking a leak in a tire. Right, yeah. And, it, you know, like, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, because, like, uh, re really important that you identify these things, and it's, it's such an impressive piece of technology. Uh, you know, you pr pressurize the inside of the RV and we're able to identify leaks before they happen. Uh, you know, you think you do that once a year, uh, that, that's just going to maintain everything and make sure everything's caulked properly. And uh, what I really like that what you mentioned is, I, like, I, I'm guilty of it, we don't get to know our own RV as, as personal as we should. Getting up on the roof, taking a look and just making sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. Uh, you know, not very often do we get up there. So just getting up, taking a look around, getting to know the ins and outs and where everything is and how it should look is going to help you identify any issues later on down the road. Absolutely. Um, now let's kind of let's kind of dive into it. You know, we looked at motorhomes. You know, it's really important to you take a look at your tires. You know, tire pressures are good. You're feeling the tires, making sure there's no bubbles or not no breaks. Uh, get it serviced. Uh, you know, it's really important to do that at the start of the year. Travel trailers, similar but same. Right? They, they do have some unique things that you want to make sure are well maintained and are ready for the season. Maybe just talk a little bit about what are the steps that I should be taking, you know, whether it's a 20 foot travel trailer or a big fifth wheel, there, there are certain things that I should be looking at to make sure that whether I'm doing a short trip or long trip, that that tra trailer is going to act and perform as it should. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, Mike. Uh, aside from caulking, um, the next uh, most important thing that I preach about is bearing service and suspension inspection. Um, so very important to have your wheel bearings repacked at least once a year or every 12,000 miles. Um, and when, when we're performing that service, we always take it one step further. We clean the brakes after we repack the bearings and install them. We always uh, adjust the brakes to make sure they're operating properly. And then we go another step further and we also inspect your shackle bushings um, and bolts to make sure there's no play in them um, because we have seen some quite uh, quite worn out suspensions before yeah. that were on the verge of uh, destruction. And, and, and that's pretty important and it's, it's kind of a small step, mm -hmm. a small step, maintenance step that you take every year, uh, just ensuring that everything is moving and greased as it should be and you're not going to run into the issues down the road of, of having a, a bearing burnout and cause, you know, axle problems. Right? You just wanted those small steps go a long way absolutely uh, you know other important thing I think to, to look at when we're looking at travel trailers is uh, making sure your your wirings your wirings good nothing's got corroded uh, your breakaway your breakaway cable making sure that's performing as it should you do all these things at the start of the year you're you just feel that much more confident moving forward oh exactly right? it's gonna save a lot of trouble yeah, so I think, I think that's really great. Really appreciate uh, yeah. you coming here, Tyler. I think it's really informative. Just some simple t tips, guys. Uh, whether you are mechanically inclined and can do it yourself, or you're someone like myself and I can't, so I go to the experts like Tyler at BGM, uh, I think it's really important that we all take a look at our spring maintenance schedules. We want these RVs to last a long time. And if you are renting it out or thinking of renting it out, these small preventative steps are gonna ensure that this asset that's, that's generating an income for you uh, is gonna continue to last and you're gonna provide the best experience you can to your renters. 
Uh, so again, thanks again, Tyler. Okay, thanks no for problem, uh, thanks for coming out here. And uh, yeah, thanks again, guys. And tune in next time to Mike's RV Couch.